SpaceX had originally hoped to use its launch tower to grab the Super Heavy booster again, something that's become a major highlight of Starship's flight tests. Fans were eager to see it return in Flight 10, as the last tower catch happened back during Flight 8. However, SpaceX has confirmed that the booster won't be caught this time. Instead, it will perform a soft landing in the ocean. That approach carries a high risk. There's a real chance the booster will not survive the impact with the water. What makes this decision even more surprising is that this isn't a reused rocket. It's a fresh one, Booster 16. And just building it likely cost about $63 million. Nearly half of that price went into the engines, which are by far the priciest part of the booster. Booster 16 is new and hasn't flown before. Booster 14 was reused earlier to test reusability. SpaceX already caught boosters in Flight 7 and 8. So many expected them to do it again in Flight 10, but they won't. Why skip the catch? It comes down to priorities. Rocket tests are expensive, and sometimes the cost outweighs the data. But even small data points can lead to better designs. SpaceX focuses on learning something new with each launch. That's likely why they chose not to do a tower catch this time. SpaceX has already shown it can catch boosters with the tower arms. They've done it twice and know how to lower the risks. Doing it again wouldn't add much new. Booster 16 is from the older Block 2 series, while SpaceX is now moving to Block 3. Using this older booster for different tests could help improve the next version. Also, during Flight 9, SpaceX tried a new landing method. The booster came down at a sharper angle to slow down faster and use less fuel. They wanted to test how it handled air pressure during descent to improve flight control software, but that test failed. Booster 14 ignited 12 engines, then lost signal and broke apart mid-air. As a result, they didn't get the data they were looking for. SpaceX is using Booster 16 to retry the steep landing test that failed before. The rocket will descend at a sharper angle to slow down faster. This will help test how the fuel lines handle stress, how the latest Raptor engines perform, and what improvements are needed for the Block 3 design. There's another possible goal, exploring backup landing methods. Right now, Super Heavy can only land by being caught with the tower arms, which is risky. A failed catch could damage the tower and delay launches. SpaceX may be testing safer options. Booster 16 doesn't have legs, but landing it softly in the ocean can show how the structure holds up. Onboard sensors will track impact forces and how the rocket responds. This data could help develop alternate landing techniques in the future. Even if they lose this booster, the information they get can make the next ones much better. So, this is not really a loss. It is a big step forward for making the system safer and more reusable. This decision also shows that SpaceX is getting ready to move into the Block 3 phase. That version will likely be more advanced and more reliable than the current one. Just recently, Booster 16 was seen with the hot staging ring already attached. It was taken out of the building area and moved to the place where rockets are stored before launch. This happened right after some other work was finished inside the building. These signs show that Flight 10 is almost ready. Even more exciting news came from a United States government source. A new notice was published saying that launch activities are planned near the Starbase area in Texas. The notice includes a seven-day launch window starting on August 16th and ending on August 22nd. Every day during this period, the window opens at 11.30 at night and ends at 1.34 in the morning. This is a clear sign that SpaceX is aiming for a launch soon. These times might be for a final test or maybe even the full flight itself. After many months of waiting, the 10th flight of Starship seems very close. There was a small problem a few days ago with one of the engines on Ship 37. It is the upper part of the Starship system. One of its engines had to be removed and replaced overnight. SpaceX is now putting everything back and preparing to run another engine test. If this goes well, SpaceX might ask for final launch permission within a few days. The Federal Aviation Administration usually gives a response about two weeks before a launch. So we are now in an important moment. SpaceX is almost ready, and we may see the next Starship fly again very soon. Starship is a very special rocket. It is extremely powerful and unlike anything built before. Many people are watching it closely, including NASA. They are counting on Starship for a very important mission called Artemis III.
This mission will take humans back to the moon. Right now, it is planned for the middle of 2027. To make this moon mission work, many parts must come together perfectly. These parts include the Space Launch System rocket, the Orion space capsule, the human landing system built by SpaceX, the new moon suits, and the refueling system in space. All of these are complex and must be finished on time. The most important part in all of this is the Starship Moon Lander. It is being built right now in Texas. This version of Starship will take astronauts from orbit down to the moon and then back up. It must work perfectly because everything depends on it. To help calm worries about delays, the leader of NASA spoke with the president of SpaceX, Gwyn Shotwell. She gave a clear promise that the Starship Moon Lander will be ready on time. But the Moon Lander is just one part. The new moon suits are also very important. They are being developed by a company called Axiom Space. A leader at the company recently said they are making good progress. These suits have to protect astronauts from the moon's harsh conditions. The suits and the lander have to work well together. If these two things are not ready and working perfectly, the mission will not succeed. The return to the moon depends on all these parts being ready in time and working safely. In other news, an astronaut named Barry Wilmore just retired after working for NASA for 25 years. He flew on four different spacecraft and spent a total of 464 days in space. He also did five spacewalks, spending over 32 hours working outside the spacecraft. Wilmore became well-known after he and fellow astronaut Sunita Williams were stuck on the International Space Station for nine months due to a problem with the Boeing Starliner spacecraft. It was an unexpected situation, but they handled it with professionalism and strength. The director of the Johnson Space Center said Wilmore has been a great example for everyone. It is not known what he will do next, but it would not be surprising if he stays involved in the space world in some way. One day before his retirement was announced, another major story came out during a government press meeting. The acting head of NASA, Sean Duffy, said that the United States should build a nuclear reactor on the moon by the year 2030. He said this is very important because the country is in a space race with China. The moon has very long nights lasting about two Earth weeks. That means solar panels are not very useful there. Without power, machines and people cannot survive. That is why a nuclear reactor would be a game changer. It would make it possible to have a real base on the moon that can stay active even during the long nights. The plan is to build a reactor that can produce 100 kilowatts of power. That is not a lot by Earth standards, but it would be enough to run systems on the moon. And if SpaceX wants to build its own moon base in the future, it will need power like this. Sean Duffy also said something important about the Artemis program. He said that people understood the Apollo missions because they were simple and bold. The goal was clear. Go to the moon. Now, with Artemis, people are not sure what the goal really means. He said that the United States needs to make people care again. So even though the 10th Starship flight will not include a tower catch, it is still one of the most important steps yet. It will help SpaceX collect new data, improve future designs, and move closer to returning humans to the moon. Stay tuned. Big things are coming.